Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Mistress Azine in the Tomb of Sargeras. So only a week ago we released a PTR preview for this encounter. If you've already watched that, you're not going to learn too much from this. However, of course, we have now killed it on live servers, so we do have footage of both Phase 2 and 3, so at least you'll get to see the visuals. This is a three-phase encounter which requires you to deal with multiple different fish-based mechanics. This fight is pretty chill for the first two phases, but Phase 3 has a bit of a harsh pseudo rage that will really test your healers. Now before we talk about each phase, let's go through the abilities that she'll be using in every phase. Now the boss will mark the tank with Burden of Pain. This debuff, which deals some shadow damage every second, causes that tank to mirror all physical damage taken with the rest of the raid. So whilst they have this debuff, that tank needs to avoid taking any physical damage whatsoever. Even a single melee hit from the boss can kill people. So to avoid this, the other tank of course needs to keep the boss whilst the Burden of Pain is up. And the tanks pretty much just keep switching who has the boss each time this is cast. Now the Burden of Pain tank doesn't just sit there and do nothing, he needs to be picking up the three Abyss Stalker adds that spawn when she casts from the Abyss. These guys deal shadow damage with each of their melee attacks rather than physical, so the Burden of Pain will not be triggered from their attacks. And apart from melee hit, they will occasionally cast Dark Depths, which will shadow step them to a random player and hit them with a 4 second dot. This is more annoying than anything else as the adds will be spread apart and they won't die as quickly. However, this is interruptible and the adds can be stunned, so you should definitely do that just to keep them under control. When they die, they will leave a patch of goo on the ground. This goo deals some damage and reduces your hit chance, so make sure you don't stand inside it. The goo is used to counter tornadoes later in the fight, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. The last ability she'll cast in all three phases is Hydra Shot. She'll mark a few targets with a beam and send a bolt towards them after 6 seconds. These bolts deal a ton of damage, but the damage is split between all players hit. You also can't have all of the marked targets stack on top of one another and have everyone soak all of the hits at once as the bolts leave a 6 second dot which stacks, and if players get 2 or more stacks of this, they will be stunned for a whole 6 seconds. So instead, players need to fan out around the boss, whilst the rest of the raid just helps spread the damage by standing in the bolt's path. Additionally, melee players who are marked with this need to move away from the boss, as the damage is only split to players between the marked target and the boss, not behind the marked player. Also, the Burden of Pain tank shouldn't get involved in this ability at all, it deals physical damage, you'll one shot the raid. With that out of the way, let's talk about Phase 1. During Phase 1 you'll need to deal with slicing tornadoes that travel across the platform in a wall formation. If you are hit by a tornado, you receive a nasty physical damage dot that lasts for 20 seconds. The way to counter the tornadoes is to get them to contact the goo that's left behind by the Abyss Stalkers. This will cause some of the tornadoes to despawn, allowing you to pass through the newly formed gap in the wall. Now this goo only lasts a short period of time, so the rain needs to make sure that the stalkers die just as the tornadoes spawn. If you do it any earlier, the goo patches might despawn before the tornadoes even spawn making everyone get hit. That being said, the Abyss Stalkers do have a large amount of health, so you shouldn't be too scared slamming your DPS into them. Just make sure you're ready to stop. On top of this, multiple members of your raid will be debuffed with Consuming Hunger. This is a very long-lasting dot which can only be removed by standing within a Thundering Shock Jellyfish patch that the boss spawns throughout the phase. Standing inside this patch will stun you for 4 seconds, however this effect can just simply be dispelled. When the Consuming Hunger is removed, a Murloc Ad will spawn. This Murloc Ad will just spam cast Water Blast at random players nearby, but this is interruptible, and these adds can be stunned. You'll want all your DPS to swap and nuke down these adds as soon as possible, they don't really have that much health, but while they're alive they're just annoying, just get rid of them. And once you've got the hang of killing the Abyss Stalkers in time, and getting rid of the tornadoes, and dropping your consuming hunger, as well as dealing with the Hydra Shot, and making sure that your tank doesn't kill the entire raid with Burden of Pain, the boss will enter phase 2 around 70% health. Now in phase 2 she'll lose access to her slicing tornadoes, consuming hunger and thundering shock abilities. So any consuming hunger debuffs out on your raid will remain on players going into phase 2. So preferably you should try and time going into phase 2 just as thundering shock jellyfish patches spawn so that players can remove their debuffs straight away. Also, as there are no slicing tornadoes in phase 2, you should just kill off all abyss stalkers as soon as possible, as their goo serves no real purpose in this phase. So with those gone, what does she have? Well, first off, she'll be casting Cool Velius. This will make a large line of bubbling water spawn across the encounter area. A couple moments later, a giant fish will jump across that line, dealing huge damage and knocking anyone who is stood within the bubbling water. You have a couple of seconds to avoid this fish, just make sure that you react quickly and don't get caught out. However, if possible, all players in the raid should try and dodge to the same side of the room. This is because the boss can cast a Hydra Shot just as the bubbling line of water spawns. You want to have as many players on the same side as possible just to help split this damage from the Hydra Shot. However, 
it's super unlikely that everyone's going to make it. So using some sort of damage reduction healing cooldown or something like a rally just to make it so you can survive through it is a good idea. Now she'll also be casting Summon Osunet, which will cause a bunch of befouling ink patches to spawn around the room. If a player runs into these patches, they'll absorb it, gaining a debuff which deals ticking damage and slows them. You want to avoid soaking any of these befouling ink patches, especially if the cool Velius is about to come in, as the slow will make it difficult to dodge the ability. However, you do need to use these ink patches when the boss casts Beck and Sarukel. This will cause a giant whale mouth to spawn at the side of the encounter area, which will begin to pull in all players while dealing ticking damage to them. The only way to get the whale to go away is by running next to him with the ink debuff. When you do this, the whale will suck the ink off of you, and once it's done this three times, it will leave the encounter area until the ability is cast again. When dropping off this ink, you want to make sure you go within the larger outside semicircle around the whale's mouth, not the smaller inner semicircle, because if you go within that one, you'll instantly die. So when this ability comes in, three mobile range players should have the ink already picked up and ready to deposit it as soon as the whale appears. Do not soak the ink too early, however, as the debuff may expire, slowing the whole process down. But providing you can deal with those individual mechanics, the difficulty mainly lies in their overlaps with the Hydra Shot. When you're getting pulled in or when you need to squeeze over to one side of the room, the Hydra Shot can be very difficult to soak. You just need to make sure that every single player that can soak does, because otherwise you're very likely to lose people. But once you've got the hang of that and you get Mistress to 40% health, Phase 3 will begin. Now, Phase 3 is simply just a mixture of mechanics from both Phase 1 and 2. You have the slicing tornadoes from Phase 1. You need to deal with these the exact same way as before. Make sure you kill the eels as the tornado spawn to allow the raid to squeeze through the gap that the goo creates. Now, you will get the consuming hunger debuffs back from Phase 1. However, you cannot remove them because the jellyfish don't spawn anymore. And this is where the pseudo enrage is. As the raid starts to get more and more of these consuming hunger debuffs, as well as all the other damaging abilities that are going out on the raid, it becomes increasingly difficult to heal the encounter. So the idea is that you need to kill the boss before this damage becomes unhealable. If you're struggling, we really would recommend that you use Bloodlust in this phase rather than on the pool, as this is the only phase where damage on the boss actually really matters. And from phase two, you really need to watch out for Cool Velius, the big fish that goes flying across the room, as well as the ink patches that spawn from that phase. Now the ink serves absolutely no purpose in this phase because the whale doesn't spawn, therefore you can just have players run into it when it's convenient, just to make sure that you have this additional space when you're trying to dodge the waves. And then of course on top of all of that, you still have the shared abilities from every single phase, you have the burden of pain, and you have the hydra shot, so you need to watch out for those as well. But that's all it is for this last phase, it's pretty much just kill the boss before she kills you. So thank you very much for watching guys, if this guide did help you out then make sure you leave a like on it, it helps us out a lot. If you'd like to read up about this fight and get a refresher or any of the other fights in the Tomb of Sargeras, then do go check out our written guides over on Wowhead. The link for that is in the description below. Also, just to conclude the video, just want to say a big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. You guys are absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to join that lovely group of people, the link to our Patreon is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Take care.